Welcome back to another Astro 310 video. In today's video, we'll be discussing the space environment. This lesson is particularly interesting because the space environment is so hostile for our spacecraft and for humans for that matter. So we have four objectives for today's lesson. The first is to describe the space environment's six major hazards and their effect on our spacecraft. The second is to de describe the free fall environment's three effects on the human body. Third is to understand the hazards posed to humans from radiation and charged particles. And fourth is to know the potential psychological challenges of space flight. So the six hazards to our spacecraft are here explicitly. There's charged particles, radiation, atmosphere, free fall, vacuum, and orbital debris. We'll talk about each of these uh, different um, hazards in more detail now. Charged particles are the most dangerous aspect of the space environment. The sun sends out a steady stream of charged particles as solar wind and periodic bursts of particles called solar flares. GCRs, or galactic cosmic rays, represent solar wind from distant stars or remnants of exploded stars. The Van Allen radiation belts protect us from the sun and GCRs, but it can also pose another charged particle hazard. These belts occur when charged particles get trapped due to Earth's magnetic field. Charged particle effects may be in the form of rapid charging or discharging of our spacecraft, sputtering or sandblasting from high-speed particle impacts, or bit flips, or also known as single event upsets, which may harm satellite electronics and communications. Our next hazard is that of the radiation environment. The radiation environment from the sun can heat exposed surfaces, which is generally pretty good for solar cells when it comes to power, but it can be bad for electronic components and the cells themselves if the heat is, is too much. It can also degrade spacecraft coatings, particularly on solar cells over time. Solar pressure is caused by photons and is very small when compared to drag. However, over time it can upset a spacecraft's orientation, causing it to point in the wrong direction, which is definitely a hazard. Our next hazard is that of atmosphere. The particles in the atmosphere can cause drag. The effect of drag on our satellite is variable depending on the orbital altitude and spacecraft size. Between 130 and 600 kilometers, it, varily, it varies considerably, uh, while above 600 kilometers, um, the effects of drag uh, were pretty minimal because the atmosphere is so thin. Atomic oxygen from the atmosphere can also degrade the spacecraft surfaces as it oxidizes much like it does on Earth. Our next hazard is that of free fall. The free fall environment for our spacecraft means there are no contact forces, um, which is good for our experimentation and mixing of materials. However, it can be frustrating for engineers as it's hard to know how to handle liquids exactly in that environment. Notably, the spacecraft is in free fall around the Earth in its orbit, not zero G as often incorrectly stated. Our next hazard is that of vacuum. The vacuum of space will cause outgassing for our satellite. The ambient pressure in space is nearly a perfect vacuum. This greatly reduced atmospheric pressure causes some materials to release trap gases. For this reason, we often bake our satellites in thermal vacuum chambers prior to flight to mitigate the inevitable outgassing in space. Cold welding is another really interesting phenomenology that only occurs in space. Cold welding occurs when mechanical parts that have very little separation between them um, get up into space. This pocket of air disappears due to the vacuum of space and essentially causes the parts to fuse or weld together. For this reason, satellite designers try to avoid using moving parts where they can. Um, another interesting uh, effect of the um, vacuum of space is that of um, having only radiation um, as a heat transfer mechanism. Convection and conduction occur through mediums such as air or water. Since space is in a vacuum, radiation is the only method of heat transfer which limits the effectiveness of the satellite to get rid of excess heat. Our last hazard that we'll talk about in space to our spacecraft is that of orbital debris or space junk. Micrometeoroids can, or space junk or orbital debris, all the same thing, can cause a, uh, can damage a spacecraft during a high speed impact. Even things very small, such as uh, orbiting paint chip, um, which as you can see here, a uh, depiction of in this picture. In this case, an orbiting paint chip struck the space shuttle in 1983, causing this kind of damage that you see. The paint chip was only 0.2 millimeters in diameter, but was traveling around 30,000 miles per hour when it hit, um, causing a 4 millimeter wide crater that's about 20 times its original size. Uh, you can imagine the kind of damage that you could expect from something even larger, such as like a baseball or, or even softball or even larger, uh, could absolutely devastate your spacecraft. 
So the space uh, environment also has effects on the human body, not just our spacecraft. And that is primarily, um, we're going to talk about those here now, um, essentially free fall effects, radiation charged particle effects, and also the psychological challenges. So first, free fall. Um, some effects on the human body uh, due to free fall are that of fluid shift. So in space, your fluids are going to redistribute all around, um, primarily towards your chest and upper body. can cause even um, noticeable changes in people's appearance, such as what you might see here in this picture over here to the right. Uh, astronaut pre-flight and then and during flight, he obviously the fluids had changed his appearance significantly. You can also experience motion sickness, is no surprise. Uh, third, uh, you have reduced load on weight-bearing tissues. Uh, your muscles may atrophy. Your bone density definitely decreases. Uh, astronauts mitigate this by exercising daily and frequently. Um, there's also radiation effects on the human body. Um, the primary effects are going to be cataracts, cancers, and even death. The effects are going to vary depending on your exposure time and intensity, and the solutions are typically to wear uh, protective suits for astronauts during EVAs or extra ve vehicular activity or spacewalks, and then to minimize the duration, uh, the overall duration that someone is in space. Lastly, we have psychological stresses on humans in space. Um, there's a demanding work schedule often, and separation from family uh, can be real, and uh, the effects of that are, are definitely palpable. So I hope you learned a couple things about the space environment. Uh, we talked about the six major effects on the spacecraft. We talked about the free fall environment's effects on the human body. We talked about radiation particle uh, effects on the human body as well, as well as briefly mentioning the uh, psychological challenges of space flight. So that wraps up our video for today. Thank you much. We'll see you next time.